Candy blinds can be used in a number of different retail outlets. Um, chemists do them very, very well. Uh, I've seen them in clothing shops. I've seen them in confectionery shops. Um, places where they have high volumes of traffic at the front counter, ideally is a great place to put a candy line. Product for a candy line has got to be something which can be just grabbed. I like that very much. Uh, so a product like, um, yeah, for, let's talk about a stationary item, uh, blister pack of pens, textures, confectionery, um, even a little plush, um, uh, any, anything that it can be easily procured and that is priced at a level which is not a, 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 um, a purchase that needs to be thought about. So ideally you want to try and keep your prices sort of under that $10 mark. A candy lane should be varied in what sort of products you have. So you'll have your staple products on the shelves. A candy lane should be all about moving products that might not be part of your everyday inventory. You can get in, you can get out, keep it fresh. You've got to keep it moving all the time. A candy line can't be stagnant. It's got to be something which someone can come in one day and go, I like that, come in the next day and go, I like that. That's what a candy line is all about. Candy line, um, most people are going to be standing when they're going to be looking at the product. So ideally, a candy line should be sort of from the floor to three foot type of thing, something which can be easily picked up. Dump bins are very good on a candy line or a low standing and doll can be used. Um, the purpose of a candy lane is all about impulse product. It's not about merchandising or show piecing. So you certainly don't have it high like you would in a normal shop because it'll also lock your view. Candy lane is all about access control. It's uh, basically puts your consumers into a, a holding pattern while they're waiting to be served. So rather than have them just mulling around your uh, counter, walking, looking around aimlessly, they're actually in a line looking at products while they're waiting um, and given every opportunity to buy something right up until the time they come to the counter. A candy line serves to uh, put people into a, into an order or a sequence. Um, so at the end of the day, they don't lose their spot in line. It makes it easy for you to serve the customer efficiently. A wind-up based kids product is, is perfect for a candy line. Um, it's something which they can touch, they can feel, they can play, and it's a five or six dollar purchase. So from, from that point of view, it's the type of thing that you wouldn't see uh, as a rule in many candy lines, but it's perfect. It's small and it's easy to procure. Plush can be put into a candy lane if it is the right size, and again, you have to be uh, you have to look at the pricing as well. But um, a lot of the the small beanie balls or even beanie boos on a spinner can be used as part of a candy lane. Um, you can use spinners to form a candy lane. Great success stories with candy lanes I've seen. Um, the blob, uh, the product that we bought out to for stores, is, we've seen a number of stores do that in candy lane. It's gone very, very well. It's the perfect product to sit in a candy lane. Um, digital photo frames from a year ago. Um, so we had a few stores that sold out repeatedly because they were used as a candy lane product, positioned and merchandised properly the way they should be, and the results spoke for themselves. The ideal candy lane product for, say, a news agency, confectionery is always a good one. A lot of stores have confectionery at the counter, but a candy lane can be used for bagged confectionery, like you see in, in mass market. There's no reason why we can't do that on a candy lane. Um, stationery, single blister packs of pens or two packs of pens, or as I said, markers or, or um, funky looking CDU displays with, with um, it can be scissors, it can be, can be anything, it can be anything that pertains to, it could be back to school, you could use it purely for back to school for impulse. So it, it can be anything as long as it's reasonably cheap and it's something which is uh, an acquisitional sale. So something that you can't do every day is perfect for a candy lane as long as the price point is kept down and it's not too big. It's got to be nice and easy to grab. If a store's interested in getting into a candy lane sort of setup, I would suggest that they use their dump bins, the News Express dump bins or, or dump bins of, of that type of ilk um, to, to get the flow of their store happening. If they have good success with that, then they may look at putting in some low fixturing uh, as a permanent fixture. Candy Lane is all about adding depth to your basket, both from a product point of view and um, more bankable dollars. So to measure a Candy Lane success, it's having a look at your data and seeing is your basket getting any deeper? And are you actually taking, is your transactional value getting higher? That's how you measure your Candy Lane.